My name is Juraj Taptic, or my nickname is JT. That's much easier for you. I'm one of the uh, two founders of RF Elements and a company CEO. I'm here to present today's webinar. Uh, um, in the invitation you saw Tassos Alexiou uh, be presenting today, and most of you know Tassos persona online or in person. Uh, his voice is too weak to, to do it today. Uh, he, he has to recover, so uh, a warm greetings from him, and I'll, I'll do it today. Um, we will be covering the topic of increasing throughput, or basics 101 to increase throughput. And uh, this is one of our <clears throat> back to the roots or back to basics uh, type of webinars. Uh, we see this as very, uh, very positive because uh, it is important for customers to understand the basic principles, uh, how our technology works, um, and then it is a, a much easier to implement it in in uh, in field, right? So, <clears throat> basic engine behind all of this is is the customer demand for throughput. This is nothing new to most or every every single of you. It's your daily business probably, uh, listening to increasing demands for more and more speed uh, from uh, the users of internet. So unfortunately for uh, networking or for uh, infrastructure, we don't have such magical mechanics like uh, Moore's law is in uh, uh, computing because <clears throat> we have to deal with physics. And, and, and that's something which basically makes this business not that easy. It's, it really is a difficult uh, 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 business. It's not that easy business. So the real challenge why we can't I mean, the, the challenge in uh, in uh, what what is limiting uh, the ability to grow the same way as demand is growing is physics. And we in everyday life we don't follow the the rules. We actually make them. We actually make it worse, right? So if our idea and our opinion about what is the biggest problem here is. Uh, or the challenge every single VISP is, is seeing in front of his business is lack of spectrum, right? So spectrum is the resource. It is a limited, is a very limited resource. And uh, you can see it's not, it's never enough, right? So we have all the new standards coming in and 80211 or any other uh, standards you can imagine, but all of them, um, as, assume that you have enough spectrum to run it. So they all make a bigger promise than in reality you see, oh, something's wrong here. Yes, they all require more spectrum available. And in reality, and specifically for uh, uh, unlicensed bands, it is, it is quite opposite. You have always more and more limitation. So the limitation comes uh, from high amount of RF interference. You can call it noise. Uh, so that's really is uh, is a biggest biggest problem or the biggest problem. The vendors try to wireless vendors uh, try to address this issue, right? The best or let's say the best way they can. They focus on really complex solutions. We can we will speak about this later, uh, but the results are not sufficient. It's really, or they have been uh, not sufficient. So <clears throat> our approach is try to solve the problem at its root. So where the problem begins, uh, rather than deal with the consequences, right? So dealing with consequences, creating filters, trying to remove the noise that already exists, 
right? Trying to mitigate the signal that already travel in the ether, in the air, is not the right approach. It's definitely not a sustainable approach. Uh, so this is wrong. Our opinion is we have to deal with the root of the problem, right? Where, where the problem begins. You can see some uh, approaches to how to solve the interference issues. Uh, this is probably not new to, uh, to you. Um, most of you probably are using these types of devices, not particularly these ones. So various shields and extra attachments to the antennas. Uh, we don't think this is the way to go. Actually, this is uh, a an, an good example uh, uh, where the industry went uh, uh, and it was not the right direction. Right? So <clears throat> I was speaking about, or I was talking about how the mainstream vendors try to solve the problem. So they, they most of them, they focus on the radio part and they try to address the issue with noise by some more or less uh, efficient approaches or technologies um, uh, that try to address the issue of noise in a certain particular situation, right? And if you take a, a look on it, uh, it, it goes into a more complexity and more uh, basically even cost uh, of the devices, right? So you see a GPS thing and active filtering and that, this is just to, illust uh, to illustrate the, the trend. Uh, I'm not going to talk about particular devices or particular technologies. Uh, but this is, this is something which is uh, not our approach. We try to focus on on the root of the problem with the noise. And I will first explain that thing. And then uh, I will speak more about techniques, how to increase uh, uh, the throughput. So our technology is about that. This is what you will see when you, when you come to our uh, website. And uh, our solution is about noise rejection and zero loss, right? So say virtual zero loss. So if we translate those two things into uh, a, a commercial product and feature names, then we basically will speak about horn antennas and about twist port connector, right? So let me let me go into a first part, which is a, a noise rejection using horn antennas. Um, this is typical patch array sector antenna, which has a very wide radiation pattern, typically 100 to 120 degrees at negative 6 dB, and has a plenty of side lobes. And uh, th those side lobes are, if you can imagine them, they are like small, smaller antennas attached to the main radiation lobe, and they equally transmit and receive uh, the signal uh, or deliver the signal from or to the circuitry of the radio, right? What is critical to understand here that those side lobes, uh, you see them marked in red color here, they are the main reason or one of the main reasons why you have a problem with noise. Uh, to, for better understanding, you have to understand that the, you can imagine the antenna as, as your mouth and ears being the same thing, right? So uh, when you speak louder, you hear louder. <laughs> so if you use high gain, you do both things with higher gain, right? So uh, with, with this thing, radio, if you attach the radio to such antenna, and the antenna transmits and receives the signal to the front and to the back and to the side and to all of those side lobes at the same time. The radio cannot choose which one to hear, right? Or which one to process or where to send. It does it 
simultaneously to all of those lobes. And that's the reason why all the antennas listen and talk to each other in the field, these types of antennas. So uh, horns, and that's what we introduced back in, I guess, 2014, horns are completely different animals. Yeah, and if you can see, this is on the right hand side, this is a 3D, uh, 3D radiation pattern. As you can see, there are no side lobes. So that antenna is naturally behaving this way. Um, what difference does it have? A huge one, and we will show, I, I will demonstrate it later in, uh, in the real examples. Uh, but basically, this is the core of, of the idea of how to get rid of noise, how to eliminate the interference, right? So the, the rule number one, if I can make it in rules, is to use the antenna that radiates with a clean pattern. Um, we have another webinars where we explain how you understand the... Uh, um, radiation patterns in data sheets and all, all those uh, uh, things. But again, I will go back one slide. Yep. Let me play it. Yeah, so you cannot compare performance of this antenna with the horn simply because of those side lobes. Those side lobes create most of the problem you see in in uh, in, uh, in the field. Okay, so that's that's on the horn antenna for a sector. Like right? this is a typical sector antenna. I, I guess is like forty degrees or fifty degrees. Uh, you have a similar uh, situation with uh, more directional antennas. Uh, they are often called point to point, but really. That is not technically a correct uh, way how to name them because you can use any antenna for any kind of job if the properties of the antenna, the radiation pattern and gain are suitable, right? So this could be equally point to point as could be a very narrow sector. Not this particular one that wouldn't be a good choice, but something which has a very narrow radiation pattern. So you can see this is a typical parabolic dish, right? You can see a parabolic dish with a smaller diameter, not a huge one, um, has a, typically has a side lobes too, right? They are maybe not that uh, significant as they are in a high gain patch array sector, but they are present. So if you are in a dense deployments and uh, you use a, a very high gain dish antenna, and you anticipate there, there will only be a, that main radiation lobe, which is not, uh, not highlighted in, uh, with the noise sign in this slide, you sometimes are surprised that you are picking the noise from, from somewhere, and that's because of those uh, side lobes. Uh, Especially those first two side lobes, you see, they are very in a very narrow angle from a main lobe, but they they simply pick the signal from the distance. It could be easily half mile, one kilometer away. So, uh, and you know, if this is used for point to point, you don't have so many options on point to point. It's just it has to go this direction or nothing. So. For the noise rejection, this is really the technique is to get rid of the side lobes. Again, some people use uh, shrouds and various shields, but you can, you really, unless it is professionally designed, and even in that case, it only does a little influence in comparison to what can be achieved if you use antenna like this, which has no side lobes by design. Right, and that's the horn antenna. Um, I think the picture is self-explanatory, and it is really this. It, it, it's not uh, how to say colored in better color. It really radiates this way. If some of you are already 
using uh, our horn antennas, then you can probably judge on on this. Uh, for those who are not, uh, this really is how the antenna radiates. It's one single uh, beam of the energy. You don't have issues with uh, uh, with the side lobes. This antenna is basically blind and deaf from the side. Right? So uh, it is a huge difference in the field performance if you use uh, antenna with such clean radiation pattern. So second part of our technology is about eliminating loss, right? Uh, th this animation explains the change what we defined in 2014. It, it basically explains something like a, a reference design for, for, for a radio. Um, with this, you will meet, uh, if you are using um, a technology of third vendors, Ubiquiti or uh, Cambium or Mimosa, you will meet this twist port thing as a part of the adapter product, right? So you basically slide your uh, um, radio you have available into it and and it converts those coaxial feeds into, into a waveguide. But basically what the twist port is and the idea behind it is to go from the radio uh, circuitry on the, on the board straight to a waveguide and all the connection happens on the waveguide. Waveguide is is uh, another way how to transmit the radio waves. It's basically uh, an alternative to a coaxial cable, a much better superior alternative to it. And uh, this is what we designed back in 2014. And I will not spend much time here uh, just to explain how unique this thing is and it really i believe it changed this industry already so let's go to some practical situation and practical uh, application of our technology in field so first of all it is a significant dif difference in uh, in uh, uh, radiation pattern and not only in general terms, but also there is a one important thing here, and that is a consistency of the pattern with frequency and with the antenna system. That means horizontal or vertical polarization. A typical situation for a traditional patch array sectors is that those two, horizontal and vertical, they are not identical. Yeah? So on top of the both having side lobes, uh, they don't cover the same area uh, with the same, uh, say, signal or gain, right? So you really have a tricky situation where some customers have good signal in both polarizations, some have uh, only in one, some have really poor performance. The whole picture, the whole throughput is, is really not outstanding, right? And it goes worse with increasing uh, uh, increasing noise floor or increasing uh, amount of, of uh, wireless stations in the area. While horn antennas, they and symmetrical horn antennas uh, we have, they they simply have identical horizontal and vertical. It's the same thing. So you're sure that the performance on both chains is consistent, which is pretty important for uh, technology, for the radio technology most of you uh, use, right? So this is some some important uh, uh, message on, uh, on the consistency of uh, horizontal and vertical delivered. So a real application, how to increase, uh, how, how you can increase throughput by by rejecting the noise or eliminating the noise issues. So a typical situation you have, or this is a kind of a school example, right? A single AP uh, covering uh, the area with traditional, using traditional sector antenna. So you have an AP radio and the antenna mounted. 
there is a lot of noise uh, you, this antenna picks. So if you replace it, that's a clean, you replace it with the clean radiation pattern, you see, you see uh, that the link throughput goes up simply by removing, uh, removing the uh, side lobes. Here is one important thing. Um, most uh, most users, well, most first-time users, right, uh, are not familiar with it. They, they cannot overcome the idea because in practical life, usually bigger, more powerful, more higher gain, more something which is more, right, is better. In RF, and, and I emphasize it, especially speaking to our uh, audience somehow based in Texas, or I think majority of you are, right? In, in, uh, in wireless, that's not always right. And this is a specific case where this is actually working against you. Using higher gain on traditional, on traditional uh, sector would bring you nothing but more problems. You will be picking noise from more distance, uh, basically not the right thing to do. The, really, the solution here, how to increase throughput, is to get rid of side lobes. That means use the antenna, which is clean radiation pattern. So use the horn antenna. And that is significant improvement on, on just this one in one. Don't care much about lower gain. That is the thing that can be mitigated, and it usually the, the signal to noise improvement you get by reducing the uh, side lobes has a much better influence on your link throughput and the stability and everything than the nominal gain lower by, I say, 3 dBi, right? Uh, you can see many feedbacks from our customers online on uh, uh, Facebook groups or um, forums that confirm exactly this thing. So really, the gain is not the issue here. The issue is to have a clean radiation pattern. Then you get, immediately you will see improvement in the link throughput, right? Uh, now, if you think about this situation, then what comes first on, on uh, uh, people's mind is, um, okay, so if I can do it with one sector, right, and the horn is so clean, you know, maybe I can do it with more, right? So the typical situation, everybody uh, en encountered it in, in, in a professional life is that you have overloaded the sector, right? The traditional sector. It maybe worked well, because you were the only one and the spectrum was clean, nobody else was there, but it was just too many customers, right? Adding more traditional sectors would not work. But now what you can do with horns, and that's the way how to increase your throughput in the given area, is not replaced by one by one, but replace, you know, restructure your network. And that is this is this is the, the the key. This is the very important thing. Many of Wisps, uh, you know, they they don't admit it is possible because simply all the experience they had in the past was against this. It was it is this is not possible. This is what you see here on the, on the slide. These three uh, collocated, densely collocated, thirty degrees. Uh, sectors was not possible. There was no antennas for it. And if there was, if there were antennas, they were not capable of doing it because they had the side lobes and they interfered, right? So uh, not only you can exchange the traditional sector with the horn, you can collocate more horns. Now you do your own mathematics about your customers and your network. What does it mean? Right, but it means, of course, it means more money invested, in, and also it means more revenue. Right, so 
So the, 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 the rule number two is you don't change one by one. You just think a new, different way about the coverage patterns because you can collocate more antennas. Yeah, so you can, that's very popular slide, by the way. I don't know why, <laughs> probably the vocabulary, but uh, you, can, you can do a huge leap from what you see on the left-hand side, which is traditional sector antenna with noise issues and poor to mediocre throughput. You can do a one magic leap with, with little investment extra to use three symmetrical horn antennas with full throughput on each of them, right? That really is possible. Now, if you start thinking about it, and that's what people, uh, what we see the feedbacks from people, they start thinking and then the, the first questions come, right? So typical question is, I don't have available channels. I have, I, I, I barely can run what I have now, but how can I put three different APs on the same tower, right? So now this is a little bit of a, of a holistic approach, but basically the way how you look or how you judge about the networks is that you, you, you see the you see the results coming from the radio firmware and the radio is looking uh, or the radio is understanding the reality around it through the antenna, right? So when you see that you don't have available spectrum is because you are using the antenna with a lot of side lobes. And using this antenna, it's like using uh, eye, eye glasses, right? With those eyeglasses, you really see that reality. But if you change it, and that's what this animation is trying to, to, to demonstrate. If you change the antenna, you suddenly see a different reality, right? The reality is the same. You, you just see it through a different, uh, different uh, filter, say this way, or different eyeglasses. But it is now the new reality because you change that one particular antenna and now the spectrum becomes cleaner. And that's, that's important to understand, right? That also not you see it, your radio sees it, is able to see it the same way. So now you have available channel and you can do that. And you can basically repeat those channels. That's what you can see as a feedback on uh, online from our customers as well. So you don't collocate three, you easily collocate 12 of them and you just repeat two channels. Yeah. Uh, if anyone is in touch with me through Skype, I have a quote uh, it says, if you, if, you, if you change the way you look at, at, at things, the things change themselves. And that's probably the, the good applicable quote here, right? It's from Max Planck, uh, quant theory. Okay, so again, the same works for noise floor. Yeah, uh, as a typical situation, people say, ah, is it too much noise, right? That's exactly the case. If you replace the antenna and you, uh, you start seeing, or your radio is start seeing the different environment, even that the uh, environment is the same, right? It's just the different, uh, different mouth and ears attached to the radio. And if you do it on your devices, that's perfect. If you convince your competitors to do it as well, that's even better, right? Uh, that's another discussion, but if it's only your devices in the area, right, you will soon figure out that the best thing you can do is simply replace all of those traditional sectors uh, with horns simply because you will get so significant improvement in spectrum availability and in noise floor decrease 
which is kind of the same thing, that considering the uh, economical benefit you get of being able to deliver more significantly more throughput, uh, this is, you cannot resist, right? If you think rationally and you don't have other, other limitations like uh, uh, they might be uh, unrelated to this, but you cannot resist to do it. And that's what we see on the many, many customers um, from here, Slo I mean, Slovakia, as you can see, as you can hear, but uh, in the whole across the Europe, in the United States, people just, they don't replace one or two antennas. They migrate the whole network in an organized fashion to use it by using horns, right? So that's what we called massive scalability. Uh, you can scale your network to increase your throughput uh, from, uh, from a given area or, you know, territory. So instead of trying to use three traditional sector antennas, trying to shield them, uh, uh, trying to use uh, non-overlapping channels, which is, of course, very limited uh, approach, Basically, instead of uh, fighting the noise uh, with the wrong weapons, uh, the idea is let's move to horn antennas and scale. You basically can divide in the subdivisions and you can add horns as you need them and you can repeat channels. So in at the end of the story, you have to... Or, at the beginning of the story, you have to have this picture in, in on your mind that this is what you what you probably should achieve, and that's the network with very very limited self interference and extremely high throughput. You can really see using horns, and that's irrelevant from a radio technology what you are using. You may using you may be using um, ubiquity prism, um, uh, um, AF5C rocket prism. You may use the old uh, rocket, you may use EPMP-1000. You will see all of those radios performing at their max specs. And, and that is something, uh, something quite unique Right? And that is confirming that we are addressing the issue on a level of a physical energy going out of the antenna and received by the antenna, right? So this is how it is possible. And it, I mean, we have hundreds of customers as a uh, actual proof that this works. Uh, the, the point of this increasing throughput approach is to explain what is behind this, what is the idea behind, and that you uh, should not understand you are replacing something one by one, right? So I put the 90 degrees patch array antenna and now I put their horn antenna and it should work automatically better. That's not, in most cases, this is not the right approach. The right approach is to take a look on on uh, on the situation and understand it this way and start rebuilding with this picture in on on your mind. Yeah, I think this goes the same. So this is basically explain the third pattern of our uh, um, of our technology uh, evangelium <laughs> and it's horn antennas twist board and the way how you use them the the way the new way how to build wireless networks and that's you understand now you can scale massively right uh, let me use five more minutes about uh, explaining you a few useful sites or tools that will help you in understanding. So first is uh, our link calculator. Uh, our, it's very easy to go on, on our website, on our homepage, and then 
you cannot miss it. It's a uh, um, one of the tiles. And basically the link calculator, there is an educational video and it is very intuitive way how to how to basically simulate or play with the uh, either single CPE, that means a point-to-point -point or a multiple CPE uh, scenarios and how to understand what you can expect uh, from, a, from a particular link or a, or a, uh, a sector, right? Uh, what is what I should emphasize here, we have a very, very high match of what you can see here with the reality you achieve, right? You can Google about this link calculator, uh, about opinions. Uh, you can definitely find some on our uh, user forum or online on Facebook. We are pretty active in, in, in Facebook, so you cannot miss us. Um, just go after Tassos Alexiu and contact him. He will help you. He's, uh, he's excellent in these things. So, um, so the first thing is link calculator. This will help you understand what you can achieve. The second is our community. If you are not uh, um, on Facebook, as I'm not on Facebook, for example, I'm one of those dinosaurs. Um, but they say Facebook is for old people, so I'm not that old. <laughs> uh, definitely, you can you can try our uh, our forum. It's called www.rfelab.com. Um, I'm pretty active there. You can you can uh, uh, shoot me a private message if you don't want if you prefer this way. Uh, we are uh, very how to say customer oriented in terms of we. We answer quickly and we, we love to speak with customers, right? We love to see the improvements they get. Um, again, customer feedback, you can Google a lot of them on our either YouTube channel or, um, or as I said, uh, uh, Facebook is really uh, where we are active. So I think this is it uh, from me. I leave a space for uh, questions. Okay, so we are ready to take questions. Go ahead and write them in your chat box. Any questions? Well then, so we have come to an end. Um, we are recording this live and will be posted at, on ISB Supplies YouTube channel. If you do so happen to have a question, just please go ahead and call our sales team at 855-947-7776, or you can contact us at sales at ispsupplies.com. And, well, I wanted to say thank you, JT, for presenting, and thanks, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. Thank you. Have a great day.